السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا Alhamdulillah <tuh> بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونسح الأمة وجعلها المهجة البيدة ليلها كنهارها لا يجب أنها إلا هالك يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزالة ساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تجهل كل مرضيات أما أرضاءت وتدعو كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذب الله الجديد <coughs> Oh mankind Fear your Lord and be beautiful to him The day of earthquake is a terrible thing The day you shall see every nursing mother will forget her nursing baby and every pregnant one will drop her load and the day you shall see the status of mankind will be just like drunken yet they are not drunken but severe will be the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my respected brothers and sisters in Islam the topic that I chose for today is very important in our lives since the Ramadan is coming next month, inshallah, so we need to talk about that. I'm not talking about the Ramadan, the basic thing of Islam. So it's very important. I will say that without this topic, we cannot think about 
the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without this topic, we cannot think about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And without this topic, we cannot think about coming up here and perform our salah. Now, I'm sure that a question came in your mind, what's going to be the, the topics? The why it's so important? So, the answer is very simple. I want to talk about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran al Karim. And I'm sure that another question will arise in your mind right away. But what I'm going to talk about the Quran al Karim because Quran is not a small book or a few pages. It's a big volume. We all know that it's, a, it's over 6,000 verses in the Quran. Even if somebody starts re researching regarding the Quran in his entire life, he cannot say that this is the last step C. And when you do not need any explication or explanation or tafsir, he cannot say that. Because Allah SWT himself says, Wala wanna ma fil ardi min shajaratin aklamu wal bahru yamudduhu min baadi hisabatu abhuri manafidat kalimatullah. Inna Allah hazizun hakim. And if all the trees were pens and all the oceans were ink and another seven oceans behind it to add to its supply, Yet the name and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be finished. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then exalted in power, full of majesty, bounty and honor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said that. That all the trees will be finished and all the ocean will dry up. But the name and glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exist. So what I am going to talk about that. So according to the limitation of time, I want to touch a little bit about the authenticity and the necessity of the Quran. Why Quran is so necessary? And why the authentic I want to talk about the authenticity. The Quran was revealed long time ago, but still Muslims and non-Muslims, there are a lot of people who still believe that that book was not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's why I chose this topic. <coughs> to my brothers and sisters in Islam, the first of all I want to say that any author, any writer, any poet or scribe Whenever you write any book, you will see on top page called preface. Dear readers, please let me know if you find any mistake. And I'll fix it in the next edition. That's the every writer says. Every book you will see that. Why? Because they start with their shortcomings. They start with their weakness. They know that they will make mistakes. Only the person uh, only the one who can say that there is no mistake at all, even you cannot even doubt of mistake. There is no doubt even. So, it's hundred percent correct. Who can say that? Allah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beginning of the Quran, the beginning of the Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali Flamin, Zali Kal Kitabula Rayba Fihi, Hudalil Muttaqin. This is the book and its guidance sure, without doubt, to those who fear Allah. Very beautiful verse. From the beginning he said there is no mistake at all, and you cannot even doubt that there is a mistake. And this book is not only for the Muslims. We sometimes we think, okay, Quran is for the Muslims. No, it's not for the Muslims only. This book is for anti-human beings and jinns. Because even if somebody claims himself to be a Muslim, but does not fear Allah, it's not his book. He already mentioned from the beginning, this is the book and it's guidance you without doubt. To those who fear Allah, if you fear Allah, this is your book. If you do not fear Allah, it's not your book. Very simple, from the beginning. And now, I'll come to the point that the authenticity, the, <coughs> the, a lot of people used to think at that time that maybe it was from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the challenge at that time that وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَبِّ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِسْلِهِ وَدُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَالِقِينَ and next verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The five lam taf'alu, wa lan taf'alu, fattakun nara lati wa kuduha nas wal hijara with the little kafirin. The first of all he said that when kuntum fira bi min mana zalna, ala abdina faktu bi surat min mislihi, wad u shuhada akum min doni lain kuntum sadiqin. If you are in doubt as to what we reveal from time to time to our servant, then produce a surah like there and call you helpers and witnesses if there are any besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your doubts, if your doubts are true, it's a very beautiful choice. That Allah SWT did not say that make the entire Quran. He said only make only one surah. If you are if you are in doubt, 
that's from somebody else. So you are human being too. So why don't you make one surah? So nobody could accept the challenge. When did he make this challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yesterday or day before yesterday, one, one month ago? It's almost 1500 years ago. So within this 1500 years ago, no intellectual, no knowledgeable people, no body came to accept the challenge. If I ask a question, what are those intellectual people? What is William Shakespeare? Byron, Milton, Shelley, Keats, French Kafka, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Winston Churchill, Barton Russell, all of the very intellectual people. Nobody could accept the challenge. Why not? Because they are nothing, nothing but human being. And Quran is beyond the human knowledge. It's transcendental. It's wahi. It's the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no human being has any authority. No <coughs> human being has the ability to write, <coughs> write a surah like that. And next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you cannot, and of a surety that you cannot, <coughs> then fear the fire, whose fuel is man and stones, is made in stone, which is prepared for those who reject faith. It's a very beautiful choice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Either make a surah like that and two, or fear Allah, uh, or fear the fire. What we should do? We must accept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, either accept it or be ready for fire. We must accept it. And not only that, a group of highly intellectual people came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa during the time of Jahliya. So they said, Ya Muhammad, you are lying. Because this is from you. It's not from your God. It's from you and you are lying. My brothers and sisters in Islam, for your information, the history proves that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never went to school. He did not know how to write or read Arabic. How about if he had a PhD in Arabic literature? He could have a PhD in Arabic literature. The, the people would believe today, maybe it's possible for a man like him to write a book like this, because he had a PhD in Arabic literature, just to prove the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent us an unlettered prophet. He was a uh, scholar called him unlettered, because he did not have the knowledge of letter like alif, ba, ta, fa. He did not know that thing. So Allah just Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to prove this thing, he sent us an unlettered uh, unlettered prophet. So in reply to that question, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, if you think that it's from me, so you can write much better than me. So I will recite a short, two verses from a short surah and bring the next verse and match it together. It has to be matching quality sentence. It has to be correct grammatically, linguistically, and logocentrically. So what did he, uh, what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? He recited two verses from Surah Al-Kawsa. Inna Al-Kawsa, and last verse he did not mention. He said, bring one verse and match it together. So what did uh, those intellectual people, what they did? Some of them were poet, poetists, dramatists, satirists, all were the author. So they tried their level best, but eventually could not come out successful. What they did finally, they put, they wrote, uh, they, of course they wrote one verse and put it on the cover. Verily, this verse is from no one but Allah. They gave the recognition. They could not know that Muhammad Sallallahu did not mention the last verse. Inna Shania Kawal Aftar, he did not say that. They are being it. And they said, Laisa Hazal Kalamul Bashar. Verily, this verse is from no one but Allah. And not only that, the, the language of the Quran is not like very ordinary language. It's a very highly classic literature. I, I'm sure that there are a lot of my Arab brothers are here. They know much better than me. The, how is the language of the Quran? And Umar bin Khattab also mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. The once upon a time, he wanted to kill <coughs> Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was looking for him with his open soul to kill him. And finally he found him right in front of Kaaba, at the middle of the night, that he was praying in front of Kaaba. So Umar bin Khattab thought, okay, maybe I'll give him a chance, let him pray, and then I'm going to kill him. 
the first of all he thought that maybe jinn was teaching him because before the revelation of the quran jinn had the access to go up to the first sky to listen to the conversations of angels so umar thought maybe jinn was teaching him and once muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting from the quran he did not know who was behind him but he was reciting from the quran inna lahu la qawlu rasulin kareem this is the message from an honorable apostle at the time umar bin khattab radiallahu anhu was thinking how come he is reciting such a poetic way it's like a poetic verses he was reciting possibly he became a poet because he used to meditate in the cave of hera so maybe he became a poet so next words muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting wa ma huwa bi qawli sha'irin kareem lamma tu'minun it's not the word of a poet because your iman is very little you don't want to believe so at that time he thought that how come he knew that i was thinking about him that he was a poet maybe he is not only a poet maybe he is a soothsayer he is a fortune teller he know how to read human mind so that's why he already found out that i am thinking about him that he is a what of a poet and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting the next verse wa ma bi qawli kahinin qalila ma tadhakkarun no no it's not the word of a fortune teller because you do not want to accept that advice so at that time umar radiyallahu anhu has big problem what is this what is happening here i was thinking about him that is maybe it was it was a word of a poet but answer was not and i was thinking about him that maybe uh, he would became a fortune teller and answer is not it's not the word of a fortune teller then what is this what is happening here was saying tanzil ummi rabbil alamin this is the word of this is the revelation of the lord of the worlds and he mentioned in sayyal bukhari he was shaking and trembling and so it has been fallen down from his hand and he went back home he could not kill muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was long time before his reversion at that time he was not a muslim he was a kafir but he mentioned in sayyal bukhari that i have never heard such a wonderful recitation in my entire life which is full of laws full of economics full of politics full of science full of literature full of lucid expression it has everything anything you need it's in that book and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ma farraqna fil kitab min shay'in there is no such a thing that i did not mention in this book tibiana li kulli shay i explain each and everything in this book anything you want it's a book if you if your father passed away and you need to distribution the the property how you going to do that it's in the, in the book if somebody steal something what will be the punishment it's in the book everything it's just like it's not only book it's the constitution it's a celestial constitution it's a heavenly constitution from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which was but securely safely and meticulously preserved in a particular place called lohe mahfuz and it was revealed little by little according to the necessity that is called book and what do you think about the quran oh quran is the book from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well, and we must recite and put them in the shelves we must recite pre- uh, frequently and put, uh, put them on the shelves and sometimes some brother took some particular verses from the quran and write it down on a piece of paper put them into the water drink it to help their disease to get a good job to get married and some other purposes but my brother and sisters in islam that was not the purpose of revealing the book what was the purpose le to khud na samina zulumat ila nur to get the human being out from the darkness to the light light of what light of wahi light of the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who accepted islam their life has been changed their life has been changed because those were the robber and muggers they became the saviour of the treasury of Baitul Mal. Those who were the killers used to kill people. Once they accepted Islam, what happened to them? They became the saviour of the human lives. Those who were the rapists, they became the saviour of the chastity of women. That is Islam. During the time of Jahiliyyah, 1500 years ago, the completely time of ignorance, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established a very wonderful, beautiful and fanciful society. 
where there was no corruption at all. People could sleep at their house, leaving the door open. There was no corruption. How did he do that? Did he force anybody? Did he use any black magic? Wallahi, I swear by Allah, he never did that. How did he change the world? Only through the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the constitution. This book is constitution. Once we are living in this country, we are following the constitution. Once we were back home, we have to follow one constitution. And Quran is the constitution of entire human being and genes. This is, this is the, the, the book. But what do you think if we recite frequently? That's not enough. We must recite the book. We must memorize the book. We must study the book. And we must research the book. And we also implement this, this book in every step of our life. And this is the only way to bring peace, happiness, tranquility, ecstasy, glee, hilarity, jocularity, joviality, conviviality, and so on. Here in Akhira, my brothers and sisters in Islam, without this book, we cannot even move. So what do you think about it? We have, what? In one case, I will say that we are very fortunate because we do not have to look for the guidance. The authentic guidance came to us. The Quran was revealed to us. So we are very fortunate. On the other hand, we are very, very unfortunate because Quran was revealed to us and we stayed away from the Quran. Once we are in the masjid, we talk about the Quran, we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talk about halal and haram. Once we get out from the masjid, okay, we are free now. We can do whatever we want to. And some of our brothers, like, say, I have a lot of friends. They said, oh, I will not pray right now I will because I am involved in interest, the business. And I am doing something. It's not the halal, uh, halal business. So if I pray and if I do the haram business, it does not make sense to me. So once I will quit. I said, why don't you quit? Quit right now and make tawbah. No, he said, no. Let me make the, the beautiful house, beautiful car, beautiful swimming pool, gold money property, and inshallah we'll go to Saudi Arabia. We'll make a hajj and make a tawbah, inshallah. If Allah said that Allah will forgive, of course Allah will, Allah will forgive. He always say, he'll say that, that yes, I'll forgive, he will forgive. But my brother said, sisters in Islam, is there any guarantee that you will get the time? Do you know, we, once we came in this country, we had a visa. M1 visa, F1 visa, multi visa, um, uh, what is called, multiple visa, so many concerns of visa. And there was a time limitation, two years, four years, five years. And once we, the visa is finished, what do we do? Yeah, we apply for the extension. And the visa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. There is, we do not know the duration, number one. There is no chance of extension. So in that case, before I conclude, I will tell a little story. It came in, uh, I think, Tafsir uh, Rahul Ma'ani. So the king wanted to go for hunting. He's not an ordinary man like you and me. He's a king. He wanted to go for hunting. Once he wanted to go for hunting, a group of people were ready to go with him. His friends, relatives, soldiers, commander-in-chief, everybody were ready to go with him because our king is going for hunting. So before he left, he was talking to his chef, the chief cook. Hey, cook some good food because we'll be, we'll be tired. We are going for hunting. Once we'll be back, we'll be tired. Cook some good food. So by this time, a, an old lady, very old, on the street, and she wa wanted to talk to the king. And commander-in-chief says, do you know who am I? I'm the commander in chief and I do not have been asked to talk to the king without his permission. And you are old lady, very old, and you want to talk to the king, just forget it. And she said, no, please, give me a little time, I want to talk to the king. Once they were conversing by this time, the king close to them, riding horse, wearing kufi, not kufi, what it's called, crown, wearing the crown, because he's the king. So what is happening here? And the commander in chief says, Your Honor of Excellency, this lady wants to talk to you. And the king said, Didn't you see that we are going for hunting? Wait until we come back. And he said, No, I'm not going to take time. I'll take a little time. Please give me a little time. Only a few seconds. I'll talk to you. He said, Okay, go ahead. Said, no, there are a lot of people in front of everybody. It's a very secret message. I cannot tell you in front of everybody. I have to whisper into you, your ears. The king was really very annoyed was upset. And finally he said, okay. He put his head down from the house. Tell me, what do you want to say? 
I have no time. We're going for hunting. And the lady says, yes, you are 100% right. You, know, you have no time. Who said that you have time? Do you think that I'm old lady? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me to take your life in different forms. I'm not a old lady. I'm the malakul mouth, angel of death. How about that now? So he got scared now. The king said, oh, malakul mouth. Please, give me a little time, ah, just a few seconds. I just want to see my beloved wife for the last time. Then have you heard the name of Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam? He was nothing but a king. He was a prophet, he was a king, and he was a prophet of Allah. One of the Baitul Maqdis was building up the, the Masjid Al-Aqsa. The jinn was working on that, and he was watching with his teeth. It came in Surah al -Sabah. Everything and explain, I have no time to talk because I have very limited time. So. He said, so he asked the permission. Allah SWT did not give him the permission. I took his life the way he was standing with his stick. Same way I took his life. And he was standing <coughs> for several times until the, the uh, battle like this was finished. And Jin finally came out. And they, they came to know that he was, he was dead long time ago. But Allah SWT, that, that was the plan of Allah SWT. And he, he was the king and he was the prophet of Allah SWT. And I took his life the way he was standing. And he was nothing but a king. Let's go. No time. He fell down. He fell down from the horse. Passed away. So my brothers and sisters in Islam. What do you learn from this? So anything you want to do. If you want to make tawbah. If you want to start praying. If you want to establish a school. If you want to establish a masjid. If you want to do any good thing for the people. If you ask me when is the best time. Right now is the best time. Why? We do not know the future. What's going to happen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ashad wa la ilaha illallah wa hadahu la shaykala, wa ashad wa anna Sayyidina Muhammad an abduhu wa rasooluhu, wa usalli ala Sayyidina al-Khalki Muhammad salatan takunu lana nuran min kulli zulma, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa maan ittaba'a sunnatahu, بهذه إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنجو نفس ما قدمت لقديم واتقوا الله إن الله كبير بما تعملون My brothers and sisters in Islam I came from Texas with a purpose so I am the executive director of an organization its name is Rahma Foundation USA it's a charitable organization under 51c3 tax deductible and we have a project only one project and which is very unique project but there are um, 3,000 Islamic organizations in this country, and we are the only one that completely unique from all others. Mashallah, all, are, all of them are doing a very good job. And we are unique. Why we are unique? Because it's a, uh, we have a project that called Al Hera Leadership Academy. What is Al Hera Leadership Academy? It's a gifted school for talented orphans only. We chose the talented orphan. They, uh, they got uh, they got selected through three, three tests like written test, Bible test, and IQ test. Those who are selected, we take them. And we want to make them doctor, engineer, lawyer, journalist, in the light of Quran and Sunnah. We started this school from Bang uh, in 2012 in Bangladesh. We started this other project. And our second unique thing is we want to branch out this al Hera Leadership Academy in different countries of the world. Right now, al Hera Leadership Academy in Bangladesh, inshallah in the future, the al Hera Leadership Academy will be in India, Pakistan, Middle East, Far East, Africa, everywhere, all over the world, because we do not have the leader. So that's why we do not give the name orphanage. We keep the name of Al Hera Leadership Academy. Al Hera means you know the Hera, from the cave of Hera, we got the idea. So 2012, we started from fourth grade to 12th grade is completely residential school and residential teachers. Teachers cannot go back home after teaching. They will have to stay there. So that's why we are making the staff quarter for them. So this 12, uh, uh, nine years, from fourth grade to 12th grade, we divided the Quran into nine. It takes three years to memorize the Quran. And our uh, student will memorize within nine years. Why? We divided the Quran. Every year they will me memorize one part of the Quran with translation, tafsir, fiqh, and hadith. Once they will complete their high school graduation, which is 12th grade, by this time they will be Quran hafiz and they will be Islamic scholar. And they will go into the chosen field to become a doctor, engineer, lawyer, and we will support and sponsor them until they, come, uh, they become a professional uh, degree. So, my brothers and sisters in Islam, <coughs> if I ask a question, 
who is the leader of 1.5 billion Muslims? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Was he orphan? Of course, he was an orphan. We all know that. So our goal, and if I ask, uh, and if I ask a question, that how many medical doctors have you seen in your lives? Those who were the orphans and started in the orphans, uh, orphanage. I asked the several uh, masjid and several gatherings. Even I did not see even one hand. That I have seen one doctor or one engineer or one lawyer or one journalist. Why? Why not? If you have a son and daughter, what are you going to do? First thing you want to make doctor, engineer, lawyer, journalist. So why from not, not from the orphans? Because they are the neglected one in the society. They, they do not help the father, mother, brother, sister, nobody to take care of that. So our goal, our slogan is today's neglected orphans will be tomorrow's leading intellectuals of the society, inshallah. So we, I, I'm sure that you will be happy if you hear several years later that a lot of orphans now are becoming uh, became a doctor, engineer, lawyer, journalist in the light of Quran and Sunnah. So, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the orphan, I have no time to talk about. If you go to Surah Dukhan and Surah Abdul Ma'un, you will know about that. But I will finish with saying one hadith from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he said about the orphans. He said, Ana wa yatini fil jannati wal usbu. And he showed his two fingers that those who will take the responsibility of an orphan will live in Jannah with me. Not only will live in Jannah, will live in Jannah with me. And he showed his two fingers that the distance between the man and me will be like this. That means the neighbor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if anybody take care of the orphans. And so, my brothers and sisters in Islam, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your generous donations, we have completed the third floor building, boundary wall, everything. We started uh, 2012, alhamdulillah, and we are giving them high quality food, high quality education, high quality clothes, high quality food. Everything is high quality because every in Bangladesh, according to the last statistics, the five million orphans in Bangladesh, everybody sleep on the floor. And we sleep on the, on the bed. We have a, we use the bed, mattress, comforter, pillow, everything, and they sleep on the floor. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Like when we had to come, Hatta you hit by Yahi, my you hit by Nafsihi. You are not moment. If not think for your brothers, what you think for yourself. So if we sleep on the floor, uh, bed, they will sleep on the bed too. So our students, all students, sleep on the bed. And we give them bed, mattress, everything. And um, comfort, and even mosquito net, because Bangladesh is a lot of mos yeah, <coughs> mosquitoes. So right after Salah, I'll take you only two minutes, brother. Uh, right, uh, right after Salah, and I will request each and every brother, we have a box right there. Please try to donate $20, because I, I'm not local organization that next week I'll come. Maybe another half, one year, if the brothers, if the committee and the brothers, if they allow us to do that. So I will request $20, and I know more than half of the brothers does not have even $20, because they do not carry cash. So I will request some brothers, those who have more money, you can donate like 40, 50, 100, 200 dollars on behalf of those brothers who will not be able to donate even 20 dollars. And, and the, our sponsorship is 1200 dollars. Now, don't get scared 1200 dollars. No, too much money. You don't have to pay right now. We have a brochure. It takes less than two minutes. Fill it up and give it to me. Give it to me and somebody will contact with you. So whenever you make your house payment, if you make your car payment, you can uh, include 100 dollars, 100 dollars a month. And the most interesting thing is, you cannot buy, uh, you cannot buy a masjid or anything with zakat money and sadaka money. And we accept zakat and sadaka because we are dealing with the poor, needy orphans. So interesting thing is, you can buy a house in Jannah with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with, with your zakat and sadaka money, two hundred dollars a month. So right after salah, inshallah, and we need some bed also, the bed, mattress, I told, uh, told you, and uh, comforter, each, including all is $250, and you don't have to pay right now anything. We have to pay cash, credit card, and of course pledge. So pledge, is the most important thing is pledge, if you, uh, if you pledge to give a, donate a bed or uh, take the responsi uh, responsibility of an orphan, so just $100 a month, and um, bed is like $50 a month, the five payment only. So two hundred fifty dollars, and we have so we need some computer also five hundred dollars if anybody wants to do that. So I think I have my time is finished.
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا ولم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا ان نسينا وقتنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا نسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واغفر لنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفروا ما تنسون Allahu Akbar 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 Allahu